Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to this edition of Ask the Experts. It is going to be an exciting one because we are experiencing unprecedented moves in the markets. If you don't believe me, I'll prove it to you in just a second. If you don't know who I am, oh, look, it probably doesn't matter. All that's going to matter is what I'm going to say over the course of the next hour as we chat markets and chat your portfolios. I am Carl Kaplinga. I'm the market analyst over here at Think Markets Australia, and it is a pleasure to be with you. Over to you, hit the Q&A window, hit the chat window, whether you're on Zoom uh, or live streaming on YouTube, and I'll do my best to give you a technical and fundamental reader. Hey, we might as well start here. You know, where, where else better to start than the NASDAQ? And this unprecedented pattern that I'm talking about, the one I tweeted about today, um, is uh, going back uh, three sessions. So this is the current session, minus one, minus two, minus three. And we're saying that we gapped down from there, so the gap to the open, uh, and then rallied, right, by however much, however much it was. Then we gapped up the next open, then we fell, right? Then we gapped to here, uh, and then closed X amount above there. And I can assure you, oh, I'm not sure if this will work, if we can see the research that goes behind it. Excellent, okay, so the formula. So how did I come up with this idea that the market uh, action we're seeing now is unprecedented? Don't worry about all this other stuff. This file is called historical research. It's where I um, you know, create bits of code that search the, the, um, the market, uh, search the price history of various securities to see if stuff has ever happened before. Um, but this is what I search for today. So going back three days, you know, and, and a percentage gap down from the previous low, followed by, you know, a 2.3% gap down, followed by a 5.5% gain from the low, followed by a small gap up, followed by a 4% decline, followed by a 2.4% uh, open uh, above the previous close, and then followed by a 3.4% gain. So when you run that on the... Um, uh, on the filter here, uh, which is, you know, actually you can't see the window, but I can assure you the filter is the uh, NASDAQ and the S&P 500. Um, you can see that for all six conditions to be met, this would have to add up to six and it only adds up to four, which means it's never occurred on the S&P 500. I can assure you it never occurred on the, on the NASDAQ either. Um, it'd be interesting to go back and check those times as they would have been particularly um, volatile times where you got four out of the six occurring. Now look when they occurred. I know that was probably the South, Southeast Asian crisis in 98. Um, this one is the one uh, recently, actually, this year. And then you go back to the GFC, a bunch of things in there, and then the NASDAQ crash. So it just tells you that what's going on now is pretty unusual and pretty unique stuff. Bottom line is uh, we are still very much in the long-term downtrend. So I mentioned some probabilities uh, a, a couple of days ago, again, on Twitter. And I said, look, um, this candle here, it, look, it does change things. It is a bit of a tectonic shift in the demand supply picture because we are seeing, I guess, if anything, maybe supply just back off a little bit, a little bit of demand come in. I don't say little bits, but look at the volume. The volume down here is not enough to say that big funds are making big moves, but it's enough to say there's a little bit of, a little bit going on. So I said, look, more than likely, you know, hey, 5% chance it's the start of the next bull market and we're up here. 5% chance, 25% uh, chance that it's the start of a meaningful bear market rally. I think that is a possibility. 50% chance we get to the light pink zone flame out, just in line with the trend. I think I said 10% chance sideways. And I put such a, a small probability on sideways because I just don't think we're in a sideways style of market. I think we, it's just all or nothing. And then I said a 10% chance we go straight down. Um, and that kind of occurred there. But then this this move here, I think reinforces this move. And, that, and, and the pop probability that we are going to see some sort of rally. Where does that rally? terminate is it the light pink zone is it the 25 percent chance i gave for the dark pink zone um yet to be seen let's see how the candles turn out but i think you need to position yourself a little bit more or a little bit less i should say to the short side a little bit more to the neutral side and you can have some sneaky cheeky little longs out there just to take advantage of a bit of a bounce here because you never know hey five percent probability i believe it could be the start of the next bull market but also the corollary of that is 95 percent chance it's not the start of the next bull market the s p 500 looks pretty similar i don't think we need to talk too much about that and it is worth um i think having a look at the asx 200 with i should do the um analysis on this one should i the historical analysis see when you've got this white candle black candle white candle and i'm going to say that in terms of the percentages we get pretty close to never before uh, but we are still being dominated so what we saw uh, on the US markets, 
that big white candle, uh, and we've got this big white candle is totally unrelated because that's our RBA uh, announcement. A um, little bit more volume here, a little bit more meaningful, um, but I still think this is the dominant theme here, this demand side uh, uh, exhibition, this, this exhibition that the demand is really in control, and then we've had a fairly muted response from the supply side, and then to be fair, today closes high coming back. So this is consistent with my idea that we are actually in uh, more of a rally phase here for the ASX 200 as well, uh, and therefore for uh, positioning somewhat less to the short side. It is hard, let me tell you, it is hard. And you might think, hey, it's very easy to make money in bear markets. Well, it's not that easy because uh, when you get the, the volatility like you have here, often you get these um, these rallies, these these rallies that fade, you know, and then you, you, you're 10, 20% lower in, in six weeks time. You go, well, why did we have that rally? It's because ultimately there is still a pile of cash out there working every day trying to get into the markets why is that because we continue to work we continue to get to save for our retirements that money needs to find its way into the market so you know we had a whole heap of cash created over the last 15 years by central banks so to never rule out the possibility of sharp rallies even though the broader economic picture continues to deteriorate and will probably cause a recession and will probably cause lower earnings and will probably cause a deeper bear market somewhere down the track that is the nutso crazy market you're in right now hey welcome to the party everybody if you haven't seen it before you are going to have one hell of a time over the next 12 to 18 months is my tip if you have seen it before then you know what i'm talking about okay that i think is a pretty good little overview of uh, of what's going on at the moment and maybe what to expect um, so let us segue ourselves into the first uh, stock of the day which is macquarie group uh, it's not that one, MQG, there it is there. Uh, and this one is for Sharon. And look, you know, I, I'm, I, I reckon I could do this one pretty quickly in the technicals because you know I'm not going to like it, okay? Long-term downtrend in place, short-term downtrend in place. The price action is, well, very, very recently, lower peaks, lower troughs still. Um, going out a little bit, maybe there's an opportunity here for a, a higher trough to, to form here and to be confirmed. And that would be confirmed, I would suggest to you, um, just giving you a systematic way of confirming these things by if we can close above that middle trough, okay, this middle trough here, and that I'll give you the exact number if, you, if you're uncertain. Uh, and you can see over here, the high is 164.59. So 164.60, close or better, and we are changing the broader price action picture into now higher troughs. It will be higher peaks, and potentially there's a little bit of a rally there. Where can that rally get to? probably uh, up and around. Oh, there's definitely a, a big zone here of supply. Why is there a supply zone here? So this um, previous area was demand, okay? And we know there was buying in there. Look at the lows, look at the dips, look at the buying, look at the buying, look at the buying. When we get down here, that buying is going, oh no, what have I done? Uh, hopefully I can get back out and break even. I think you know that there's gonna be a bear market. Things are gonna get worse, um, but I'm losing money. I don't wanna lose money, I hate to lose money. Um, if you're out there and you do like to lose money, give me a thumbs up. But I don't think that's anybody. So if I can, I'd prefer to break even if I can. And this represents break even for them. Now, does it represent break even for, even for everybody? No, it doesn't. Not everybody's going to think like this, but some of them will think like that. I can guarantee some of them will. And it will create what we call latent supply, not latent as in latent Hewitt, come on, latent supply in and around this level. Um, so if we can actually close above that 164.60, then that is probably the ultimate target. Would you want to buy something on the basis that that is the ultimate target? I don't think so. So if I had to go buy, hold and se or sell on this one, it is not a buy for me. Uh, I'm struggling even to get to a hold. Maybe you can hold it on the basis that you would watch for the candles in here and potentially look um, if you, if you, you know, look for an exit here. Look for an exit. If you're uh, if you're somebody who's you know wanting to um, rethink your strategy in Macquarie Bank, you know um, maybe you'll be watching for candles in there. What candles would you want to see? Um, I think we know the candles that we don't want to see in there. If you're a bull, and they would be the black ones that look like this, or the ones that kind of uh, look like that, but might also have on them uh, an upper shadow as well. Not sure if this is going to draw for me. Let's see. We go there. We go close enough you get the picture of what that might uh, look like there. So either of those types of candles in this zone, I think would be a, giving you a great opportunity to exit Macquarie uh, and do something smarter with that money, dare I say. Uh, and if I had to give them probabilities, look, I think uh, the probabilities of, let's say, uh, Macquarie going sideways, I think that's probably that's probably a pretty high probability, isn't it? Uh, if I had to go, I might go 30, and then I might go 20 up here. 
So make it out what you will. Okay, 20% at rallies, 50% it probably just stuffs around, and 30% it actually continues down in line with this uh, broader long-term downtrend. So that's basically saying, I think 80% chance it's not going up. What does that mean to you? Okay, let us very quickly have a look over here and check the Macquarie Bank uh, fundamentals. I know it's widely held and it's very popular. Uh, so what we've got here is the Thomson Reuters Refinitiv Icon uh, spreadsheet. It's it's a it's a, a pro forma spreadsheet that they uh, they download if you spend the two thousand two hundred dollars a month. Yes, a month on this subscription. Crazy what think market spends on this. So I can have a play around with it. And then I um I have created my own a uh, few bells and whistles here. Uh, but it does give us uh, forecast data from this many brokers. And it also gives us the historical data that Macquarie has actually reported. The reason why this is not working is because we need to line up the year end with Macquarie because it has a March year end. Um, for what it's worth, 12 brokers have estimates. We have two strong buys, eight buys. So, you know, think about this, you know, 10 out of, well, it says 12 here, but this actually adds up to 14, but 10 out of 14, we're calling it buy. And then we look at the chart and we say, well, hmm, maybe we need to take broker uh, broker consensus with a pinch of salt because, well, if that many brokers are buying it, then who the hell is selling it? Someone's selling it. Uh, two holes, two sells. Maybe these guys are just more powerful. Their average price target is 198.29, which allows 28.6% upside from the current price. My model using the default values actually says Macquarie is looking a little bit cheap here, isn't it? Um, but let's investigate a little further. The next place I like to go after looking at the broken consensus is this line here. I like to see the shape of the earnings, right? And actually, we've got uh, uh, cycling some uh, bump in earnings, eight, 824 to 12. That's a 50% gain in earnings. You can see there, that's a monster. Uh, and then, but coming down, you know, 13% and 4% growth, 4% uh, growth. So compound annual growth rate over the period, so really going from, I want to say, here to here, is about 4% per annum, uh, which is not a particularly great growth rate. Um, Low market risk. Look, assuming we get past uh, this this stuff here, probably probably low that they can achieve that growth rate. I think um, what's an appropriate EPS uh, is thirteen point six appropriate. Well, for Macquarie, actually thirteen point six is is fairly challenging. I think, uh, and I don't think I need to change that. I think um, it's actually quite low historically, uh, and that's that's a good thing. So I actually don't think that's um, a terrible valuation there um, for Macquarie. Mine is 167. It's way below theirs, but it's still allowing for a bit of upside. So if I had to say Macquarie is around about fair value, on the right side of fair value, if anything. Um, but this will change. If you think, well, there's a bear market coming up and Macquarie doesn't do well in bear markets, it does change things, right? Even if we go to moderate risk, if you went to high risk, I don't think we need to go to high risk on, on Macquarie Bank. You know, they're pretty clever individuals, aren't they? Bull, bear or otherwise. Um, but then it would change these things significantly. I, look, let me let me go with hedge my bets and say moderate. In that case, it's, it's again, fair value to slightly um, uh, positively valued is, is where I would go at a stretch on Macquarie. I think that is a pretty comprehensive review of Macquarie Bank. So let us keep moving now. Uh, John has got Woolworths and Linetown. Look, Woolworths for me looks like a short here of anything. I mean, it's, it's just such a well-established now long-term downtrend. Having said that, look at the volatility. Um, it's just... This is the other thing, right? I mean, look at these rallies. Look at these drives. Look at these bear market rallies. I'm not sure if I want to play the game for a short, John. I think I would find something that has less ability um, to do these incredible runs. Uh, but it's not a buy for all the same reasons I, I told I talked to you about with Macquarie Bank. Um, we've got a problem here. We've got a problem here. And I think this is probably the real major problem here in, in this area here, uh, that previous demand zone. Uh, we had some scratchings here, didn't we? Uh, maybe predicting that it would break through that and come down here, which it did. Uh, and best case scenario, probably getting back up to there. Um, but again, doing the, the probabilities, look, I, th I still think we're, we're, we're actually probably worse than uh, Macquarie on this one because we're probably, we're probably oh, look, 50, 50 down here, you know, 30 sideways, 20 at best for up, just respecting the fact it's done it before. Um, it certainly would not be a buy for me. There's it's no reason to buy it. If you want to hold it, then you know understand those probabilities and maybe you're going to get a better better price to exit, but that would be it. Uh, Woolworths on the, uh, the valuation side of things. Let's have a quick look here. Um, I don't have to explain everything now because we know how the spreadsheet works. Uh, there might be a little bit of uh, noise coming from outside the window as well. There's some uh, tradespeople working out here, so apologies for that in advance. Okay, so let's go to June. 
uh, 22. We're still recruiting some numbers here. 14 estimates, three strong buys, five buys, four holds, three sells, average price target, 14, 15% above the current. If we look at the EPS line, it is growing, uh, 124, 138. So it's, it's, it's not that lumpy growth that Macquarie Bank had. It's actually quite steady growth uh, and pretty healthy at 8%. That would be definitely above the market's average. Uh, I'm happy to go low risk for Woolworths just given what they do, right? Uh, where it makes sense. Macquarie is moderate, right? Because, you know, they, they need they wheel and they deal in bull markets. Uh, yet Woolworths, you know, it's a supermarket. Um, this is high for me um, for this. I, I think 8% growth and 21 uh, times earnings is, is, is still feels high to me. Uh, and, but it is it is a fairly reasonable, I think, um, a hurdle rate, though, given all of this. I don't think 21.2, which is the default setting, is unreasonable. I'd say Woolworths is expensive, and I said that for a while. It's about 10% overvalued, um, even at current levels, even after the fall, because uh, this growth is not enough to justify this very, very high PE. And I do think with this and Coles, you are paying a premium uh, for this low risk, and I just don't think it's worth it. That's my opinion. Okay, let us head back to the charts and do the next one, uh, which is Lion Town LTR. Uh, looks okay. It, it's one of those ones that's looking a little bit sideways at the moment, isn't it, John? It's, uh, it's kind of stuck in a range. Uh, let us uh, look here. This is the big problem, and this is going to continue to be a problem, I think, for a, a long time. Uh, $2, huge supply zone. Oh, just massive uh, supply in here. And we've actually created a new zone of supply sort of in here as well, which is, I think, what we're dealing with now. So, look, I can certainly get to a hold on the basis that uh, the, the price action is starting to look fairly positive. Uh, what do I mean by fairly positive? I mean, we've got the higher um, lows, high troughs, that pattern we talked about in the very first one which was uh, Macquarie. And I gave you uh, like a system, a systematic way of determining when that price action has changed. And we said, if it, if it gets above, so you've got, if you've got trough here and a trough here, you must have a peak here, right? And if it gets above that, then it's starting to look again. Look again, it, the, the higher troughs can only occur because, uh, so higher troughs can only occur if you've got increasing Demand. There's no other way. It can, can, can be no other explanation. Uh, if you're taking out uh, higher peaks, you must have decreasing supply because there's supply at those peaks. Now, um, increasing demand, decreasing supply is a good thing, right? So that's a tick. And for that reason, maybe you can get to a hold. But I do think this is a problem and this is a problem. And I don't think I can go any better than a hold at this stage for Line Town. That is based purely on, anal on the analysis of supply and demand. Uh, the technicals. At the end of the day, it's really all of this stuff here, which you'll see in a second, uh, all of this stuff here, we can talk about it for years and years and years, but it doesn't matter what, what brokers are telling you to do, what they're actually doing is in the chart. That that was the point I was making about Macquarie Bank. You know, a 10 out of 14 are telling you to buy, yet clearly there's more supply than demand, so someone's selling it. Uh, Lion Town, I'm going to the EPS line. We actually will get some earnings, won't we? Um, in FY24, so we can change this to 24. Uh, and it's going to go crazy because um, your growth rates from there are astronomical. Why? Because you go from not earning, earning anything to coming into production to ramping up. And yeah, I mean, you would have to take down the growth rate. I'm not even going to bother to value that. I will give you the broker estimates. One strong buy, three buys, one hold, and a 40% higher price target on Lion Town for what it's worth. Okay, let's get to the next one, which is Sandfire Resources. This one is for Chernivans SFR. Uh, it's one I've called a short in the past, I think for, for a few months now that I've called it a short. I don't think I need to change my view on that. So uh, Shona Vans, I'm not sure if you're shorted based upon uh, my previous analysis or you're long because you've ignored my previous analysis. Either way, it doesn't change anything for me. It's it's the probabilities are still going down. And if we if we sort of um, compare the probabilities on this one to some of the others, this is, I'm going to go 75% chance this is going down. Now, um, look, maybe it'll go sideways. Maybe that's too harsh. Uh, maybe we've got 15 sideways and 10, uh, 5, I said, I mean, top 5, they did know, 10 maximum. Uh, well, no, that's actually pretty good. <laughs> there you go. Um, that adds up to 100. So they would be the probabilities I would associate with that 75% chance of continuing to go lower, 15% chance of going sideways, and just a 10% chance of going any higher than where it is right now. Let us have a quick look then at the uh, what the brokers say. 
for Sandpire Resources, SFR in here. Okay, uh, we have, I can't believe that, that can't be right, 15 estimates for Sandpire. Why is this so widely covered? I'm almost waiting for this to update again. That is nonsensical to me that we've got more brokers covering Sandfire than we do Woolworths. Uh, two strong buys, six buys, six holds, two sells. I think it's yeah, it's quite a polarizing company. I mean, I think there are a lot of brokers that see the, the benefits there, but a lot of brokers that are calling it a ho hum, and a couple that are saying, you know what, sell it. Uh, Five fourteen allows for a forty percent upside target because these guys on when Sandfire is going up. They ratchet their price targets up and then they don't ratchet them down again because that would be an admission that they are wrong. Uh, but 40% for what it's worth. Uh, earnings line, EPS, you know, we've, we've gone, uh, you can see how, how wobbly it is. Uh, 77, 64, 37, 85, 46, <laughs> nil. I'm 15 brokers are telling you this thing's going to break even next year. 19, 47, 72. Uh, and this is, you know, a lot of people will go, oh, um, Sandfire Resources sounds good. Somebody else told me it was good. Uh, I don't know, copper miner, copper's good, you know. <laughs> but do you really understand what's behind that narrative of Sandfire is good? So, I mean, this looks like extremely volatile earnings. Anyway, for what it's worth, um, 72 is way higher than 46, isn't it? Okay, let's uh, keep going now and head to JBH. Getting some, quite a few sort of uh, big cap blue chips here. Today, um, it's doing better than many. Why? Uh, he's, this is probably today's pattern, isn't it? And we're going to find when we do different Ask the Expert sessions, we, we have these um, different sort of patterns occurring, isn't it? Because some things become more common in the market at times than others. And we're seeing this pattern here on a few of these stocks. So it's good to point it out. And then it's even better to tune your eye into it. And that way, um, if I'm not around when the next one occurs on the stock you're interested in, you'll know what to do. So again, we've seen this pattern here, this high trust, we break through that peak. That's a sign that we are potentially changing the momentum of the downtrend. So that's all good. And then you look up. I'd say, look, once you've identified that, look up and see where supply might be coming in. I reckon there's a little bit of supply coming in here. It's probably going to interact with the, um, uh, the, the dynamic trend zone. Uh, is that long-term trend zone something you need to be worried about? I would suggest it is because uh, in the past, it has been very, very accurate in uh, predicting where the supply is going to come in. So look, we hit that level. And look at the candles. Look at that cluster of candles. That is as supply side as you can get this cluster here. Uh, and yeah, so yes, this is turning around. This, there's some hope there, but look up and you're going to see supply pretty much everywhere you go and really all the way uh, up into here. And it, it's, it's, it's kind of at that point where um, you would say it's, for me anyway, in the very in very much in the too hard basket. This is not a battle I want to fight here. Um, so buy, hold, sell. I can get to a hold only on the basis that you might get a better place to sell it, um, but I can't be a buy. And there is an absolute possibility uh, that the price goes up here and we start a new bull market in JB Hi-Fi. That is possible. I just don't think it's very probable. And if it does occur, you're going to scream at me and say, hey, Carl, you, know, you, you told me way back here that, look, it was a hold, it wasn't a buy. You really should have told me to buy it back there. You really should have known that that was going to happen, Carl. Uh, and I will apologise profusely. Uh, no, I won't. What I will say is, hey, look, I can't tell you the future. I don't know the future. Um, if I did know the future, I wouldn't be sitting here talking to you today. But what will happen to JB Hi-Fi is it will interact with this zone. It will get above it. It will test it. Um, it will do great things. Okay, It will have great candles. And maybe somewhere in here, I might upgrade it to a buy on the basis that there's just enough reward to get you into this zone or this zone. Yeah, And only then. Otherwise, I prefer bottom left top right, and it's a long way until uh, JB Hi-Fi ever looks like that. And you have to understand what I'm talking about here is a style, style issue. So I've got people who are listening today who, who like the style, and they go, hey, Carl, yeah, I kind of gel with that style because I've been around long enough to know that the other styles uh, don't work so well, right? I try and buy at the bottom uh, and uh, because something looked cheap, and yet it kept going down. And a few times that, that, that company went bankrupt, never came back. Um, uh, and then uh, there were all those charts I didn't buy because I thought they'd gone up too much and I didn't buy them. And then I cursed myself for not buying them because they kept going up. Um, so maybe you've experienced that as well and you're prepared to um, come over to my way of thinking or not. That's your choice. JB Hi-Fi, 14 brokers, two strong buys, three buys, three holds, five. So wow, that is, now that's polarizing. Look at that. That is the whole spectrum of the buy uh, to sell 
basket there. That is, I don't think I've ever seen such a polarizing company. That should give you a little bit of um, cause for concern. Uh, the consensus is a 13% upside. Look at the EPS line. We've sort of a yeah, big bump here, COVID bump, but actually holding on to most of that before falling away significantly. Uh, flat growth. The PE is not terrible, but it is flat growth. Uh, we need to change this. Okay, that makes more sense. <laughs> that makes more sense. Uh, it's fair value, fair, fairly valued. Okay, we're saying JB Hi-Fi is about fair value here. It's certainly not a screaming bargain. Okay, so why would you buy something that's not a screaming bargain? And the chart doesn't look good. That's up to you, Algis. Next one is uh, from Kevin. I have MSG. A uh, message to the chat is disabled. Sorry, I did fix that one. I don't think we have any MSG on the market. Uh, from Chris, oh, I need to go back here. Uh, IDP, good. I'm, I'm glad you brought this one up, Chris, because uh, someone else asked for this via Twitter, IEL. Oh, this one looks interesting. Oh, how about that? Okay, finally, something that doesn't look terrible. Maybe JB Hi-Fi will do something like this in the future, and I'll be able to draw some stuff on the chart like this. Like, hmm, that's where I think we'll get some supply. That's where I think we'll get some supply. That's where we'll get some supply. Okay, but I am thinking about where I might be able to buy this thing now. So this is the first thing we've seen today that I might be interested in buying. Let me extend that across. Let me extend. Well, we actually dispense with that. There's a tiny one here, but I don't think we need to um, stress, uh, stress out about it too much. But, you know, this is half decent. Don't, don't get too excited, everyone, because I'm at half decent on this one. But it is warming up. I mean, the other the thing you should notice the most is that there's actually quite a few um, sort of white candles coming in. There's a few um, lower shadows coming in. The price action is not wonderful yet, um, but it's one I would watch. I think this is the level. Let's see how it goes. And you might have to give it a dollar or even a dollar fifty before you're sure about it. Because I think the idea of, well, just buy it now and expect it will go up, I think that's a bit risky because, you know, don't, this this is also a possibility as well that it, that it does this. All right, because you know we, we, this is demand side, uh, this is equilibrium, uh, and you know stocks do this. They go demand side, uh, this greater the demand than supply. Supply increases, equates the demand, and you go sideways. That's what sideways is, right? You had you had excess demand, now you've got equal demand and supply. What well, maybe supply takes over? The supply take over? I don't know. Do you know? Maybe it does. Okay, so that's why I'm saying, look, I don't think you can just rush out and buy it because it's the first half decent thing we've seen. I think you want to um, see, wait for signs that, you know what, this is back on again. You know, and what what well, what would that look like? Well, some more white candles, um, even something as, as simple and as little as this, test, hold, test. And I would be all over this thing. And hopefully it comes up again on the Tuesday where this occurs in that zone. If you see the magic candles, you know what candles I want to see. Uh, that one would be a doozy, or that one would be an even bigger doozy. Now, let, you all know what I'm going to do to these, right? You know they're not going to stay like that. So we're going to do this because I might not be around when it occurs. But that candle or that candle in that zone, and then it's a straight up um, buy. Okay, that's that's when it started to look good. I still need to measure reward to risk, but I think we've spent enough time on this uh, conceptually. So IDP, absolutely 100%, I get to a halt, uh, but I'm not a buy just yet. I need a few extra things to happen. I'm actually quite curious, given that it's the first thing I'd consider buying, this is the first time I've actually got some interest in what this thing's about to say. Okay, so let's go IEL. And hopefully this all check, checks out because the, nothing makes me happier when I see the... Um, the fundamentals or the valuation complement the chart. Okay, uh, let us have a look at the brokers. Ten estimates, so pretty good spread here. One strong buy, nine buys. Who is this wowser? Bloody hell! <laughs> One sell. Yeah, beauty's in the eye of the beholder, isn't it? Uh, Thirty-eight to it's a bit bit lumpy. Going to blame that on COVID. Uh, some growth through here. Going to blame that. Going to blame the the lack of growth here and that on COVID. Bouncing back, back, back. Back, back, all good, massive growth. I mean, if we had a, a bell curve of um, uh, compound annual growth rate out to FY26 for the top 300, ASX 300, this would be very, very much two, three standard deviations over to the right in terms of beating uh, the average market return, okay, for that period. So this is super duper. Uh, just get the PE right. So uh, look, it's been, it's been massive. I mean, for us to... Uh, get this growth at that P, I think is actually 
re is re really um, attractive. I don't know enough about the stock to call this one, to call it moderate, but you can see it's changing it by about 7%. Um, but I do think that PE is actually really low. So you could say, well, it's a little bit expensive, but geez, it's, it's, it's a really low PE. Or you could adjust this and you go target and say, well, what would you pay for 31% growth if it pulls it off? Well, I, I'd do this. I mean, I'd go 40. I'd pay 40 times for a quality stock that can deliver that. Will it deliver it? I don't know. Let me hedge my bets. You can see how a fundamental analysis is all guesswork. You know, a lot of people say, hey, Carl, those charts, that's all guesswork. And I say, hmm. I'm not so sure how much guesswork is involved in just understanding what demand and supply are doing, but I tell you what, there's plenty of guesswork involved in valuing a company because I didn't. I'm I'm just mucking around with with uh, with this stuff, right? I'm just mucking around with with what the brokers are saying. Think about all the guesswork these brokers have. These these ten individuals or groups. I was going to call them something else. <laughs> Think about what they had to do to come up to guess these numbers here. Um, so. Look, I think this is on the right side of cheap, IEL, and I, I do think, therefore, that the um, the valuation does support um, what is looking to be a very interesting chart, and it's nice when the two come together. Thank you for that one, Chris. And I think, coincidentally, um, uh, it was Christine might have asked, unless it's the same Chris, uh, but Christine asked on uh, the Twitter. Okay, this one's for Craig Batcore. Oh, we're getting a lot of blue chips. I think everybody today is going, hey, I want to buy some blue chips. I think the market's going back up. Not this one for me anyway. Uh, no, I don't like that. Don't like that. Uh, I don't like this pattern. I don't I don't like uh, this and this. Uh, yes, there's a little bit of rally today and yesterday, but you know, I still think the probability is more skewed towards heading lower. And uh, I think that's your, that's your target down here. So whereas I, I had sort of a reason to hold on to say like a Macquarie, um, some of those big blue chips before we talked about uh, what was the other one? JBH maybe because the price action was starting to improve. I, 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 I don't see it as much here. Certainly if we get above that middle middle peak, yeah, no doubt about it. 6664, it's going to start to look better. But I'm going to tip um, this is probably more likely to head down. I, I'm still in the sell camp on this one. I'm not at a hold, okay, to put it in perspective. Buy is not even a possibility. There is 0% chance that I would tell you to buy a chart like that, okay? Now, there's a very high percent chance, percentage chance uh, that lots of other people out there in expert land, right, expert land, uh, will tell you that BAPCOR is a screaming buy, but not me. Uh, let's see what those experts are saying, shall we? Uh, 10 estimates, it looks like. Again, uh, four strong buys, three buys, three holds. That's uh, fairly positive, 25% upside. Looking at the earnings per share line, hopefully you've got your eye in on this spreadsheet. Uh, didn't have a lot of growth, did they? Really? Not a lot of growth there. That's interesting. Uh, but we're going to get a bit going forward. 8%, a bit like Woolworths. Uh, pretty happy with that. Uh, maybe let's leave moderate. Obviously, 40 is not the right PE, so we need to get that right. Something like a 16 or a 15 is probably appropriate. In fact, 15 and eight is actually a re really good match. Like it's the, it's a match made in heaven. You know, 15 PE and 8% growth is uh, is almost perfect. Um, so this is saying, look, BAPCOR based upon uh, moderate risk. Again, I don't know enough about the company. So I'll give you the options. Maybe you know more, more than me. If that's a low risk chance of hitting that, then it's, it's you know, about fair value. If you wanted to say, well, I'm not sure about the economy and therefore what BAPCOR does. It's, look, it's actually a really defensive stock, isn't it? It's like parts, it's auto parts. You know, we're gonna drive cars, aren't we? Um, I, I, I'm gonna call this one fair value. I'm gonna say this one is fair value. I, I, I can't see screaming bargain on that one though, okay? Uh, now, let us keep moving. I know I've got lots of uh, questions today. Oh, sorry, I should be looking at, let's do one from <laughs> from YouTube because they'll be screaming at me. This one's from uh, Kiwi Banter Fan. Great to be here, Carl. I'm Cameron from New Zealand. Hello, Cameron. Welcome uh, from New Zealand. Can't look at LRS. So I can. Yeah, let's look at LRS. Uh, Latin resources, a little bit flat here, Cameron, unfortunately. Uh, not, not completely awful, if that's some consolation, <laughs> right? I can tell you things I don't like first. So I don't like, um, you know, supply, supply, supply. I don't like all the black candles. Um, if, if there's lots of demand in the system, we shouldn't see all these black candles. These really clustering sort of um, black candles, it's often insiders who are um, who just, they're selling. They're selling because, let's face it, they're in a, a fraction of what you're in at. 
so they can sell. Like 12 is still good for them. Um, and that's why you get these black candles and you really need to overcome that sell, that selling or, or there needs to be a narrative out there to cause them to want to hold because they think something better is coming. And I'm, ju I'm just not seeing that in this one right now. So it, look, if I really was very, very generous, I could say hold. But I, I and, and I'm only saying a hold on the basis that this is still here, like this long-term trend is still intact. But I would suggest to you that beneath this level here, that low, uh, nine cents. It's it's looking very shaky, as in you know it's probably over for a while. Um, you need a spark here, and it just I just can't see the spark there. Now, unfortunately, I you know to go to, to tell you whether the spark is coming, I'd need to go to the company's announcements, download every one, look at all their presentations, and say, hey, look, there's a great chance of a spark here. We don't have time in this format, obviously. I won't be able to go to the spreadsheet for you, Cameron, because it doesn't have any earnings. We're going to find that probably doesn't even have any broker coverage. This one. So the best I can do is look at the chart and say. Based upon everything the market knows, forget what you know, Cameron, forget what I know, Based because all the information for Latin resources out there, all the people who want to go and download those, um, all those company announcements, do the research and form a positive view on this and then go buy it. They're just not doing that. But the people who are in it and have it, who have already formed their view on it, they just seem to seem to want out. So again, we're not we're not doing the analysis here. We're letting the market do the analysis and say, well, if there was something there, it should look better than that. It should have price action, which looks like this, right? It should have a bunch of white candles in there, okay? Which a uh, bunch of these guys or a bunch of these guys, and quite frequently appearing in the mix. Okay, you're not going to have completely uh, black, uh, white candles every day. That's this is impossible. You get ebb and flow, supply and demand, Dow's up, Dow's down. You know, uh, interest rates go up, interest rates are down. You get ebb and flow, but predominantly you will see these these types of candles in there. So um, basically, without this and without this and without this green dark, light green zone and, and dark green zone, um, it's going to be hard for me to give you anything too positive on that one. Uh, I will go through a couple of these because they do keep coming up on my. Um, at least bulletin resources came up on my list of gainers yesterday. It must have been at this high, but it looks like it's faded back. I'm going to go ditto on uh, bulletin resources. Very similar. Um, you know, maybe you can scrape in at a hole, but it's it, it, there's just hardly any excitement. And again, we're seeing a lot of this pattern of these clusters of black candles, which again tells you that the insiders are selling because let's face it, these stocks that are kicking over rocks in the desert, when they finally do go up, that is this great release point for the insiders, isn't it, to finally um, crystallize some, some, some profits out of these things. And they know that they can buy back at lower levels when the hype comes out of these things. RMI, let's have a look at this. See, that was the best one out of a lot of them, but even then, um, as you say, capital raising probably just cracked this one. And you can see I showed you this sort of pattern on the first one where we say if it look if it if if that's a kind of crack beneath, you know, lower peak. What's well, the opposite, isn't it? I showed you sort of a pattern that looked like this, and we had uh, this is actually quite good today. We're doing a few of these. Um, so we talked about this pattern. Okay, so watch out for that pattern. But um, obviously if you, if you turn that on its head, so this is the bullish pattern, if you turn that on its head, you get you've got the falling falling peaks there we go and you're breaking through um that that's the key key drop and that would be your key peak okay and that's what we're seeing here look i, I can't i can't call this one uh, a buy that's for sure I'm struggling to get to a hold uh phil is asking for elders eld looks okay kind of closer to the um, idp education chart isn't it than some of the really bad ones we've seen but you can see ultimately uh phil uh, this it's very flat isn't it so once again, I'll refer you to the stuff I want to see. And you can see it on screen, you know, when they are going up, when they have a chance, you know, they're doing that. This is, Elders is tough. Look at the black candles in there. Um, I can certainly get to a hold on this one, but I can't get to a buy. I can get you some uh, some numbers on this though, Phil. Um, so let us quickly do this. And this, how we're going for time. Yeah, not too bad. Um, uh, we, we will get through a bunch today. Don't worry. I'll, I'll pick up the pace. And I, if I have to, I'll drop the, um, I'll drop the fundamentals uh, to get everybody's at least a technical view on the one they want. Okay, so let us quickly do elders. You've got 11 estimates, six buys, no strong buys, four holes, two sells, quite polarizing. Uh, in terms of the earnings line, up, 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 and then down. So a very flat growth. I think that's important for elders. So that's not getting me too excited. And just going with the default numbers and 13 um, sounds pretty reasonable uh, looking at some of this. Uh, and certainly that I couldn't go any higher. So I would say Elders looks expensive based upon my numbers. Now the brokers will tell you it's undervalued, but the brokers don't adjust their price targets down. They only adjust them up. That is my view. 
Uh, let us uh, continue to move. Um, let's get back to the Zoom group. Uh, we've done BAP call. Let's look at mineral resources for you, Fiona. Welcome, Fiona. It uh, looks better than many others, obviously. It's the first one I think we've seen today in that um, light green, dark green pattern. Uh, I am a little concerned by some of the supply that I'm seeing today in particular. Let me um, give you an update on the data, though. Maybe that's changed. If you've got to understand that any last candle that we're looking at in detail, um, it is still a live candle, obviously, because the market hasn't closed today. Um, and I'm getting live updates during the day. So this may change in a fraction of a second. Three, two, one. No, it turns out it didn't change over the course of the last couple of hours. Uh, yeah, just, just watching this one a little bit, Fiona. It, it's okay. Don't get me wrong. It, it, this is all still good. Uh, don't panic until we get beneath here. Let me let me make it simple. Look, give it some room. Don't panic until we get through there. Clearly, you can tell by the tone of my voice, there's something in it that I'm not, I, I don't love. <laughs> right? There's something in it that's causing my brain to go, hmm, hmm. There's a little bit of supply there, but hey, there's plenty of demand as well. So I'd give it the benefit of the doubt. I'd say hold it. Yeah. Look. Um, so how aggressive you want to be. I mean, if you're if you're a short term short term trader, you could look at a close beneath this low here as a sign to lighten the load, not get out completely, not at all. But and the only reason I'm so I'm saying that is you know we we've got supply. It's evident. It's there. Hey, it's been a pretty terrible market too, right? So there's supply there. There's supply there. And this is remember the pattern we keep sort of drawing today. So this pattern here, right? And then this is your little trough. Remember that little trough of demand that we uh, see? And you'll see this pattern replicate over and over and over again on charts. Okay, and it's probably good homework, actually. If we've got homework this week, is to go find these patterns and see what happens next. Okay, um, so, you know, maybe minus one third, but yeah, just, and that's that's being so fussy and so jittery as well, if you're, if you're feeling jittery about it. You know, and then, uh, depending on candles, there might be worse candles between the two occurring. That's probably where you, you really do need to start be concerned about it beneath that one. Okay, okay. so we've got uh, 12 estimates here, two buys, seven uh, two strong buys, seven buys, two holes. Uh, earnings line ramping up. Don't know what happened there. Don't know what about what happened there. And then, yeah, I don't know. I mean, this, hey, these aren't my numbers. These are the broker's numbers. Um, but if we look at, it must be from here to, no, that's wrong, about here. 52% uh, growth, which is, in, you know, incredible uh get the right pe 60 is too low 32 is too high 12 is probably about right target and we we start to get some some um, sensible numbers here i don't know if it's low i just think it's I, i'm going to go moderate on this just because it's a commodity stock and that's huge growth i mean that's massive growth and so much can go wrong on commodity prices between now and then so look mineral resources i think it's reasonable value i wouldn't say it's um expensive here and that's the thing you look at a chart like that and a lot of people go well that's gone up too much it's too expensive and well no if you actually look at the earnings uh, it actually looks pretty pretty well valued right now okay let us that chart by the way uh, let's look at Setai, which i thought was going to get going um and it just had a little bit of a pullback yesterday obviously wasn't a great day in the market um, I'm, I'm happy to stick with this one yeah look I, i'd go so far as to say it's, it's still a speculative buy for me it's uh, I, I like um and and hey you have to understand these turnaround plays are super specky. Okay, we're not bottom left, top right here. We've got a lot of a lot of work to do all the way up. That's probably a supply zone, or even to there, um, maybe even here. So you know you're dealing with supply all the way up, and that's probably why we're pausing here. So you, maybe there's even a bit of work to do here before you pop up. But you know, look, in the uh, fullness of time, you know. Maybe there's two bucks in this one, but it's a pure super specy buy. You're not putting a, a core portfolio holding on this. Um, you're putting you know, risk money on this only and understanding the nature of the beast. It's a turnaround play, um, but I'm happy to hold this one 100%. And uh, uh, I think it's I just think it's still a cheeky buy just on the basis of these huge white candles. And what I love to see, this, this is so important here. I don't know this is a live candle. Um, I love to see huge white candles Right, with very little response, okay, and then up again. You know that is, you know, normally when things go up a lot, okay, people want to sell, and the fact that they haven't sold, I think, is very important. That that when things go up, automatically the dumb money goes. Oh, that's expensive. Need to sell it, okay. If things go up a lot, 
and nobody's selling. It's telling you, hey, the smart money's not selling it, and the dumb money's not even selling it. This thing's probably going higher. Um, so I'm still pretty happy with that one. That was for King. Uh, don't own it, but looking for an entry. Yeah, look, I, you know, King, you don't have to be all in or all out. So, you know, that, that's what I'm talking about, you know. One third of a risk money position, you know. Have a, have a crack at it. That, that's my opinion. Okay, let's have a look at... Oh, geez. I said I wasn't, but I'm, I'm curious here. This is going to be a train wreck, surely. Let me go here. If I've called it a buy on the chart, I have to look at the fundamentals. We just don't have any coverage. I just don't have coverage of Setai. So there you go. I can't, can't give you a fundamental on that one. Kind of glad, so I need to keep moving. RAC for Warren... Get you YouTubers back up. Hello, YouTubers. I haven't forgotten about you. Um, De Delbs, I'm going to do automate next for you. Uh, race. Oh, gosh, you said it's got a little bit of a. I went on a little bit of a race there, didn't it, Warren? Just be wary. Just be wary. You've got a little bit of a level here, I'd say, and we're, we're tickling it now. And that candle's not great. So if you had it for Warren, um, it, now, hey, this is a live candle. Have I mentioned that before? Of course I have. I keep mentioning it. If this closes here or worse, and even probably even worse, um, I reckon you just, if, if you've got it, you know, if you've got it, you probably do that, okay? Um, but it's not terrible by any stretch of the imagination. I just think with the supply, you knock some out. And then we would look to see how it goes. I mean, if it, a really shallow pullback here and another attack of that zone is going to be really, really positive for this one, okay? But yeah, given the long-term trends, you know, given that price action, probably just uh, take a cautious approach. Or, hey, if you're not in it, then we're not buying either, right? That's the other thing. We're just watching and waiting on this one. It might it might get upgraded to buy in the not too, not too distant future. Okay, this one's for Delbs on the live stream. Uh, now, this is my analysis from either last week or a couple of weeks ago, and I did question uh, on the 11th or the 10th, is there any reason to buy it back now? And uh, there was no reason then. It is uh, one of the few stocks that really hasn't rallied at all today, and I think it still looks pretty terrible. So um, it's one that we have uh, watched with great interest in the past, um, even sort of picking it as a buy, I think, around this level, maybe even earlier, um, and then calling it a sell around here, and we haven't wanted to buy it since then. So I'm going to reiterate the fact that I do think it's more likely to follow the path of the red line than it is to mysteriously and miraculously just jump straight back up again. Okay, so buy, hold, or sell on that, I'm struggling to get to a hold. I'm probably more like a sell on that. Now, that is a pure technical view. Given that we're coming up on time, I'm going to have to skip the fundamentals on that. Um, the last one uh, is Andrew on CCX, and that's where I'll finish today. I'm going to start to go fast forward here. You know the drill uh, to try and get everybody's um, request met, at least on the technicals. Uh, so that one was for Delbs. Stephen saying, short squeeze rally until Friday to catch out all the shorts, and then we're going to tumble again. Hey, it's very possible given... Uh, I don't think this bear market is over at all. Okay, PLL, let's keep moving here. Piedmont Lithium, certainly get into, well, I was going to say certainly get into the whole camp. Mm, I'm not so sure. I think this is starting to lose the battle a little bit through here. That doesn't look great. Look, I can squeak out a hold until it uh, closes beneath there, and then I'm probably going to go to a sell. Um, hey, there's every possibility, possibility that it goes up from here, but just, I'm just not buying it. I'm just not buying it. I just think it's in the too hard basket. Uh, so I cannot call that one a buy. I'm um, barely at a hold and um, probably leaning towards a sell. Look, you can give it the benefit of the doubt for the time being, given that long term trend is holding. Okay, but that's the best I could go on that one. For Michael, is it potentially a hold? Potentially, yeah, of course, potentially it's a hold. Uh, CRR, is this potentially a hold? Yeah, everything's potentially a hold, but oh, I'm not seeing it. I'm not feeling the love here. It's like um, we talked about, what was it? Uh, LRS, BNR, RMI. They're very similar. Um, do you play the game that, oh, there's a chance it could bounce from here? Well, I don't agree with you. I, I agree. There's a chance it can bounce from here. Or do you play the game that this is probably the most likely scenario and there's a bit of this in here as well? Look, 100%, I'm not at a buy on that one. I'm struggling to find a reason to hold it. Unfortunately, CXO had a little bit of a pop up yesterday. We've got some uh, scratchings there. Let's get rid of it. Um, I can oh, look. This is more like a hold to me. And you might say, "Hey, Carl, that's not fair. 
giving CXL a hold, but he didn't give the other ones a hold. Well, look, at, I'm being absolutely consistent here with the analysis. So we're looking at this, we're looking at this, and then we're looking at this little supply point in here, and we're giving it a tickle. Now, we haven't closed above it yet, have we? No, far from it. In fact, if anything, we are seeing confirmation that there is, in fact, supply at that zone with today's candle. Okay, so that, that shouldn't surprise us. But there's a difference between this and the others in that I can I can get to a halt here. I'm not a buy, no way. Far from a buy. Why am I far from a buy? Because I just think this is in the too hard basket. I know it looked like a buy over here. I know, it, I, I think, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure I even said it was a buy. Well, I'm pretty sure I said maybe that day. And I said, look, it's still a buy here because it was looking okay. It taken out, it taken out this zone. Hey, I'm sorry, the crystal ball wasn't functioning that day. So yes, my view changes as the chart changes. Um, it's not a buy. I can definitely get to a hold. I don't think it's a sell just yet, but certainly beneath, or even that trough there, it would start to look pretty nasty. Um, so close beneath, say, 112. Uh, and certainly beneath uh, one oh, well, let's call it a dollar. So, you know, so if down here, this is this is the way your brain, I think, needs to think, is, you know, this is the way you're looking at these levels, okay? Let us keep moving, Telex. Oh, this this looks good. Hey, this is the, this is today's pattern, isn't it? This is the, the takeaway point from today. Is this 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 and the close, the close. But and the, what a wonderful case study. Thank you so much to Helen for bringing this to my attention because it allows me to make this 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 great comment, isn't it? That the, the, this is the turnaround, isn't it? This is how this uh, this is how stuff turns around. Oh, around. And here's the deal, right? Because if uh, the, let's call it the bear market, if the bear market is over, guess what? <laughs> guess what, all right? Yeah, this is the pattern, right? This is the pattern you need to know about, right? If the bear market's over, okay. Uh, can I call this a buy? And this is great. This is fast forwarding into the future for so many things. So Helen knows what I'm gonna do. Helen knows I'm gonna go, boom, supply, all right? Now, Helen knows that I'm gonna start doing some stuff with boxes, right, Helen? What are the boxes are gonna do? Let's go um, green box, uh, green box, red box, red box, let's go <laughs> red box uh, for the risk in the trade. So I'd wanna get my stop loss somewhere down here, right? Somewhere down there. So that would be my risk if I got in today. Now my reward, let's call that a blue box uh, from here uh, is up to here. Uh, I think look, there's a little bit of supply there. Uh, it's not as huge as the other, this is the big one. I'm going to give it a bit of doubt. I'm going to say, yeah, I think I can make the reward to risk work on this and I'd happily go and buy today. Okay. Now, is this a full-on portfolio core position? Holding no, because it's turnaround play, because it's still a bear market. So definitely, well, look, I've got every confidence in saying that, I'd always go that of a core position, but certainly that of a, um, of a risk money trade. Yeah, I can see a reason to do it. You know, there's so many, um, so much stuff that you've given me today, I just cannot see a reason for doing anything, uh, and yet we can see it recent here. Thank you, Helen, that, that has made my day. Uh, this one is from Ron. Oh, that's cheeky, Ron. Is this gonna make my day? Because you can see some of the um, some of the same stuff going on, can't you? Look, look, oh yeah, let's call it that, let's call it that, and let's go here, okay? So, uh, it's behind there, imagine, I don't imagine, it's there, trust me, it's there, look, I'll do this, there it is, okay. Um, Oh, cheeky, Ron, super cheeky. Oh, it would never be more than a pure, pure risk money bet. Nothing ever more than that. And then even then, I'm not even going to go go the whole hog. Oh, look, and that's me squinting, uh, me just being so squinting because <laughs> let's face it. <laughs> I'm not so sure, Ron. I'm not sure if I'm going to get there. I, look, I, I hold. Absolutely. Hey, if you've got Betfair, 100% hang on to it. Is it a buy? That depends on your uh, level of aggression, isn't it, as an investor? So maybe not for me. Uh, DVP for Chris. Uh, look, half decent. Definitely in that um, uh, IDP education camp. There's something here, okay? Is it amazing? Well, I'm just a little bit concerned about this cluster of black candles. Uh, but it's okay. Look, as uh, I'd say, as long as we don't get beneath there, uh, this little trend here, I can go hold. You know, clearly it's not good. it's not screaming at me as a buy. Uh, for Kevin, oh, let's do the whole lithium thing, shall we? <laughs> let's go. Let's 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 hit him. PLS. I'm get growing increasingly concerned about this one. Uh, shadow, shadows. 
shadows equal, equal supply. All right. Um, black candles equal supply. And this candle is not great on an up day. I believe supply is building. But hey, this is I've given you a wonderful little tool that you'll never ha have to ask me about today. If we form this, if we form this, we've got this, right? We've got that, right? That one there. And there you go. So beneath that, I think you've got your answer now, don't you? This is wonderful. Like if, we, if we're in there and we do that, then it changes the nature of the picture here. And that's the way I would suggest we think about it, okay? This is, we're doing some good stuff today, right? We're doing the stuff which is important because I'm not here every day for you um, and you've got to be able to do some of this stuff yourself. Uh, AKE, not as bad as Pilbara, but not knocking my socks off. Um, and I'm sure you could find um, some some relevant levels in there as well. So, you know, there's the zone, there's the zone. Uh, do you go so aggressive here to manage an exit or do you wait for that? Given the strength of the trend, maybe you can afford to wait for that. It just depends on you. Who am I to say you're more aggressive or less aggressive? But again, you know, we're, we're not doing anything worse than, than this sort of business here, okay? Because the overall trend is still very, very strong on this one, okay? So maybe we're being nervous Nellies even by, by even talking about this sort of stuff. Uh, and we've done CXO and Lion, Lion Town for your other two there, Kevin. Okay, Andrew Chacha. Andrew's back. Hey, Carl, missed the first 10 minutes. Can we discuss EFE? Yes, I need to do EFE, EFE because a bunch of People on Twitter have been asking me about it. Oh, I go hold. I don't think there's anything um, too sinister in there. Clearly, there's supply. I mean, like, come on, there's supply. We can see the supply. It's clear as day. You have to be blind, Freddy, not to see that the supply there. But we're dealing with it really well, I think, Andrew. I think we're dealing with it well. I think we're strong. We're hanging tough. Okay, uh, and we just need to knock out that supply, and then the next levels um, up here. And uh, that'd be a nice move if we get that. I'm not going to say we're going to get here or here. You know what? Probably won't. Um, but this is an absolute hold for me. Is it a buy? No. Let's deal with that supply. Let's close above that high there. So close above uh, 4.5 cents. And uh, it's starting to look very, very interesting. Uh, QXR for you. Now we're going, we're going to have to call this one pretty soon. Oh, well, there you go. So uh, Helen, remember we drew uh, the ones on your one. And so I've obviously drawn this in the past. And there you go. Lo and behold, surprise, surprise. Andrew, I'm sure you're not still on it. Uh, he, okay, he said uh, cheeky buy, which turned out well for him, which is wonderful. Um, yeah, I, you know, there you go. There's supply. You can see the candles. And this is why I do this. So you don't need me to be here. There's your supply. There's your supply. There's your little trough. And you crack beneath it. If you didn't sell some here on the basis that you got close to that high, then you certainly would have been taking some profits elsewhere. But I, I'd be looking to knock out one third in the supply zone and then another uh, third here. And maybe you'd be holding on. Yeah, I think. If you do have a bit left, hold on for that and see how it goes. But, you know, you're still making money on that trade. Pretty happy. Andrew's got a new one for us. Let's go uh, T-O-Y. Yeah, look, it's in the bet the bet, the bet basket. I'd, I'd, I'd go bet before I went T-O-Y, I think. Um, look, yeah, I get it. I, I can see it, but there's still there's still a long way to go here. So I need to see a bunch of other stuff. So um, it's weird to say... That I need to kind of see this. So you, what I'm saying, you see, like I need to see it go down before I can buy it. You think about that. I need to see something go down before I can buy it, so I can see where it stops going down, because we know. Uh, I'm not sure if you noticed, but there is a bunch of supply uh, in the market here. I don't know if you noticed. So uh, let me zoom out a little bit, and uh, just if you're not sure if there's a bit of supply in the market there. Okay, finally we found a little bit of demand. Okay, so how, what I want to see now is is how the supply side responds to that. Uh, do they just pull back on the supply side or have they stopped selling? Uh, and that's the shallow pullback here, followed by the rise again, will tell you that demand uh, is coming back in again. I mean, to type the word uh, demand in here. Okay, so yeah, keep an eye on it, but it's, uh, I'm not sure if we're going to rush out and buy that today. Uh, Nickel Mines, uh, I've called this a short for a while now. I'm going to reiterate that. I can't see any reason to buy it, David. I'm sorry. I don't think it's a bargain. Looking at that chart, hey, it doesn't matter what I think. The market doesn't think it's a bargain. I could be wrong. And tomorrow it could get taken over by Xingqiang at $2. I don't know. Okay. But the everybody knows everybody knows everything right now, right? They've all done the research and clearly they're not seeing it. But the stuff that can occur tomorrow that we just didn't know about, that can change things. And that's what that is about. Okay. TYR. Which I think looks good for for a continued generator, but it's it's under takeover, right? So I don't know what are the terms of the deal, Mark. I don't know what the takeover price is, um, and 
but but yeah, look, I'm, if I didn't know if I didn't know there was a takeover, I'd say hold it. Uh, it looks good. I don't think I'd say buy it. Uh, let's do C A U R. Yes, the medicinal cannabis still looks like a hold to me. I'm pretty happy with that one. Um, I don't think there's anything so sinister in there, Perry, to say that we need to supply uh, supply. We yeah, I, 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 I misspoke there, isn't it? To sell it, but it's not really um, misspeaking because when we sell, we're supply. You get that through your heads, everybody. When you sell, you are supply. When you buy, you are demand. Stop thinking in terms of buy and sell. All right, it just. Yeah, we don't need to supply this one yet because no, I don't think anybody else is really supplying it with any great vigor, Mark. So if 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 people if, if everyone else isn't supplying it, why would we supply it? You know what I mean? Like, well, what do we know that they don't know? I, I, let's face it. You know, I like to think I don't know anything. I mean, start on that basis. Like, start at that you know foundational concept. You know nothing, right? And that is a great rock upon which to build your investing career. You've got no idea. You're completely bloody clueless. Okay. And once you can, you know, attain that level of modesty, you're open to some of these ideas. Maybe we're going to have to end it there. We, we are we are advanced on those. I'm sorry, everybody. But um, look, we do need to end it somewhere. Um, if you didn't get your questions answered, I will do my best to answer them next week. Uh, if you are watching on the streaming and you want to attend the Zoom session, that's how you would do it. Otherwise, hey, if you're watching in the Zoom, you can stream it whichever way you get here. Just make sure you get here. Uh, if you're not a client of Think Markets, you should be a client of Think Markets because we are the good guys in the Australian broking scene. Over 3,000 uh, shares, ETFs to trade. If you want to trade on your self managed super fund, $8 flat rate. And if you are using self managed super fund, it is so important. Those words there, H I N slash C H E S S. Make sure you own your shares. You're not aggregated with someone else uh, just to get a cheaper rate. Uh, if you're trading CFDs, uh, you can do that. We trade FX, indices, commodities. If you wanted to go long or short the NASDAQ, the S&P 500, you can do that as well. Crypto shares, market leading spreads, commission free on shares. If you're just starting out, get commission free. Head to thinkmarkets.com forward slash AU for more information. Uh, award winning broker. We haven't been around for five minutes. We've been around for a very long time. Offices all over the world regulated by um, the various regulatory agencies all over the world. Easy to use platform, world-class trading apps, 24-7 customer support. I challenge you to test this out on it. If you're watching on YouTube, make sure to hit that subscribe button to stay, uh, to get notifications every time I stream live because I'm doing a bunch of these live streams now. So hold on to your hats, everyone. Make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel. Uh, hit the like button to let me know you like what I'm doing so I continue to do more of it. Apart from that, it has been such a pleasure chatting with you today. Hopefully you learned lots and had lots of fun. I know I did. All the best until we catch up again. Bye-bye for now.